to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Today I want us to think about this great salvation. What makes the salvation we have, the greatest things in life that the Christian has, what makes that so great and what are some of those great things? We're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. We want to encourage you, if you don't have your Bible, we want to encourage you to locate your Bible, get it, have it handy, as we're going to look to the Word of God to think about the greatest things in the Christian life. As always, today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and members of the Church of Christ. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. If you've got a Bible question, you'd like to know more about the church, why they do this, or, or what the church is, anything about Christian living, you'll find people there who'd be happy to open the Bible, sit down with you and discuss God's Word in a kind and loving way. And so check out the Lord's Church in your local area. You'll find friendly folks there who love God, love the truth, and are concerned about souls. We also want to help you in your desire to know God and His Word better here at The Gospel of Christ. Won't you visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com, from there, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study materials. We have lessons on the Old Testament books, New Testament books, uh, topical lessons of all types. Check us out and find out about those lessons. We'll be glad to help you in any way. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our previous lessons, we make those available to you free of charge. You can get a download from our website by filling out our media request form or if you need it on a DVD or CD, we'll provide that to you as well. And friend, in the fast-paced, technologically advanced world we live in today, check out the Gospel of Christ app, both for Android and iPhones. That's available to you free of charge. And with everybody having a smartphone and the world being so fast-paced today, it's a great way to catch up with us uh, as we go through life as well. And so we want to encourage you to do that. Let's think today about what are the greatest things in life. The Hebrew writer said it so beautifully. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? But what makes this salvation so great? And what are the greatest things the Christian has in this life? And friend, our, our motive and our purpose and talking about this today is to help each of us see how great Christianity is, how good it is to be a Christian, how good life is, and the multiplicity of blessings that we have by walking with the Lord each and every day. You won't find a better way than the Christian way, and here are the greatest things in life. First and foremost, the greatest privilege in all of life is to be called sons of God. I can do as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verse 6 through 9. I can get down on my hands and knees and I can truly pray, Our Father who art in heaven. What a privilege it is to be a child of the Almighty, the God who spoke and the world came into existence. The God who sent His Son, the one who loves you so deeply that He did everything possible to save you? What a great privilege it is to be a child of God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we can be called children of God. In Christ Jesus, Jesus there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male or female. We're all sons of God. In Christ Jesus, what a great joy it is to know that, that God's my Father. And, and here's what makes that wonderful. 
along with this great privilege of being sons of God, well, friend, we're also heirs of God. Romans 8, 16 and 17, if heirs were joint heirs, if sons of God, we are joint heirs with Christ of all that belongs to God. God is not afraid to call us His children, and thus we can cry out, Abba, Father. Friend, with everything that goes along with being a son or a daughter of God, the privilege of knowing that everything that belongs to God, all His power, all His might, all His goodness, I'm an heir of that. I have the privilege of having that as part of my life. Now let's think about another great thing about our Christian life, about what we have. The greatest joy in life is the joy of salvation. Let me give you an example. In Acts chapter 8, uh, the Spirit tells Philip to go over and overtake the chariot. As a Samaritan, as Ethiopian eunuch is riding down the road, Go over and over to the chariot. He gets up in the chariot with him. He's reading from Isaiah 53. Do you understand what you're reading? How can I unless someone guide me? And from that point, Isaiah 53, he began to teach him about Jesus. And in the process of that, as he's teaching them what he's got to do to become a Christian, the Ethiopian eunuch looks up and there, there's water. See, there in the distance is water. What hinders me from being saved? If you believe with all your heart, you may, he said. I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. They stopped the chariot. Both Philip and the eunuch got down out of the chariot. He went down to the water and baptized him. They came up out of the water and listened to Acts 8, verse 39 following. And the eunuch went on his way rejoicing. You know what David, when David got caught up in sin with Bathsheba, there's a lot of things that went wrong in that situation. But you know what David wanted most? Psalm 51, 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Friend, the greatest privilege in life is knowing that I'm saved. Knowing that I'm no longer going to be held accountable for my sins. Romans 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Because salvation is in Jesus, 2 Timothy 10 or 1, verses 10 11, and because I have every spiritual blessing in Christ, Ephesians 1, verse 3, I can say, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Friend, just stop and pause for a minute and think about what a joy it is. Every word I've said that wasn't right, every deed I've done that I can't stand the thought of, that broke the heart of God, that hurt others, every sin I've ever committed, completely removed. As far as the east is from the west, so far will He remove their transgressions from us. Psalm 103, verses 10 through 12. And not just that my sins are forgiven. I am in a relationship. I am a son of God. I have the joy of salvation. I am close to God. And with that, what a great sense of hope and joy we as Christians have. And so the greatest joy in life is the joy of salvation. Greatest fellowship in life. Closeness is the fellowship and the closeness that we have with Christ and other Christians. Listen to Acts 2.42. The new church, the church in, in, that came to existence on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, Fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayers. What is fellowship? It's a, it's a communion. It's a koinonia. It's something we have in common. It's a, it's a closeness that we have because of Jesus. Every Christian, God in Christ, we have something so close, so unique, such a tight fellowship because of the gospel and because of what Jesus did. And friend, there's nothing greater in all the world than that fellowship. You see, we die daily to the world and all that's in it so that we can live with God. We, we deny the unfruitful works of darkness, Ephesians 5.11. We give up the world and all its passing pleasures, 1 John 2.15-17, through 17, so that we can walk in the light as He is in the light. And when we do that, we have fellowship with through the blood of Jesus Christ, with God, and with one another. Friend, the closeness that Christians have, you understand this idea. If you've got a family that's close, the closeness you have with your parents, 
with your children, uh, with your family. That closeness is so tight, so powerful, such a wonderful quality of life. Greatest fellowship, greatest closeness we have in this life is with other Christians of like precious faith and with God in Christ. And friend, that makes Christianity so great. We have people who love us, love us more than we realize. We have people we can depend on. God cares deeply for you and wants the best. The, the family idea is such a powerful aspect of the greatness of Christianity. Then let's think about another great thing of our salvation. We have the greatest work in all the world working for God and serving Him. You know, there are a lot of good things a person could do in this life. A lot of beneficial things, a lot of helpful things that an individual can do. But what can I do in this life that'll last toward the other side? Listen to 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. What I do for God, it's not worthless. It's not useless. It's not just for the here and now. It goes to the other side. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their works and their labors do follow them. What can I do in this life that will impact me and impact other people for eternity? Friend, the greatest work is to work for God and to serve Him, to be workers in the kingdom. You know, Christians sing that song, I will work, I will pray, I will labor every day. Why do we do that? Because we know the greatest work in all the world is to work for God, to serve Him, to be like Jesus. The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give His life a ransom for many. Let's talk about another great thing. The greatest knowledge in this life is to know God and His Son, Jesus Christ. The acquisition of knowledge, acquiring of knowledge is a big thing in our day and age. Nearly everybody goes to college. Sometimes a lot of folks go on to grad school. Maybe somebody might even get their doctorate degree. The acquiring of knowledge is something that people understand and value as important today. What's the greatest knowledge you could ever have? The greatest thing you could ever know. What is it? To know God and to know His Son. You know, that's what eternal life really is. Did you know that? John chapter 17, verse 3. Jesus says, this is eternal life. In praying to the Father, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true living God and your Son whom you sent to, 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 to really know God. I'm not talking about factually, I'm not talking about intellectually, but to have that relationship to really know God and His Son. No greater knowledge in all the world. Friend, it's knowing the truth that's of such great value. Listen to John 8 verse 32. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. I want to, Paul said, I want to know Him and the power of His resurrection. To really know God, to appreciate that, to make that a part of your life. Nothing greater in all the world than that. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. To know the way, to know the truth, and to know the life, and to have access to the Father, nothing greater in all the world than that knowledge. And then let's think about this. The greatest victory in life is to overcome this world, to overcome sin, and to overcome self. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27, Paul said, I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I've preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. The, 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 the controlling the body, not letting, it, not letting the flesh run ahead of the spirit to keep sin in check, to really stay focused. That's a real victory. Paul said sometimes we struggle in that, and all of us do. Romans 7, Paul said, sometimes the very things I want to do, I don't do those. The very things I don't want to do, those are the things I do, and we could probably all say that. But friend, to, to, to have victory over self and sin, and the ultimate victory over the world and Satan, nothing greater than all the world. This is the victory we have, Paul said, or John said, even our faith. 
The fact that one day this world and all that's in it and the problems of it are going to pale in comparison to the joy of being a Christian and living with God. No, you can't talk about victory without hitting this blockbuster verse. 1 Corinthians 15, a chapter about the resurrection. Paul says in verse 57, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory, what do you mean? Victory through the resurrection. Victory over death. Victory over sin and Satan and all the problems. Thanks be to God. The great victory we have in this life. What a wonderful aspect of Christianity that is. Let's talk about the greatest gift. What is the greatest gift in life? A friend, it's giving of oneself. I know that, for it's what God did. John 3, 16, the Bible says, God so loved the world, He gave. Gave what? His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The greatest gift ever given was the Son of God. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that we through His poverty might be made rich. Look at what Jesus gave and gave up for us. Now let's have that mindset ourselves. In the process of gift giving, especially maybe when you're young, it's really fun to get gifts. But you know, the getting of gifts after a while kind of loses its power. You know what doesn't lose its power? Giving, the greatest gift of giving. Listen to Acts 20 verse 35. And consider the words of our Lord Jesus where He said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. The Corinthians, they gave out of their deep poverty. And the Bible says to us, give, and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Friend, the greatest gift in life is God's Son being given for us, but it's also us to give ourselves, to be a giving person. You know, we live in a world where there are a lot of takers. We live in a world where there's a lot of people with their hand out. Christians ought to be givers. We want to give of ourselves, give of our time, give of our energy and our efforts to do good. And friend, there's no greater joy, no greater joy in all the world. And the greatest gift of all is giving oneself to God and to other people. Let's talk for just a minute then about the greatest loss in life. There are a lot of things that could be considered a great loss. Financial loss in the stock market be a great loss. The loss of a loved one, great loss to suffer. The loss of one's home in a fire, car in an accident, that'd be a pretty great loss. Not the greatest loss, though. The greatest loss will be the loss of one's soul. Let, let, let me illustrate for you. Luke chapter 12. Verses 15 through 21. You have a man here who's a good planner, good businessman. He had a great crop year, and so he began to think to himself and to talk to himself, and he said, So you've got many goods laid up for many years. Here's what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns. I'll build bigger barns. I'll store up all my crops. And then you'll say to your soul, So you've got many goods laid up for many years. In essence, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry, as it were. What did God say to that man? You fool, this night will your soul be required of you. Then whose things will those be whom you've acquired? And here's the point. So is he who is rich, but not in godliness. That man thought about taking care of a lot of things. He was great at his work, farming. He was great at storing up, preparing ahead of time thinking out into the future for the physical side. But the, the, the major thing, the one thing that really mattered that he needed to prepare about, that he needed to think about, he completely forgot. And the knock came on the door that night. His soul is being required. You fool! You prepared for everything. And you forgot to prepare your soul for eternity? And that man was lost. Greatest loss in all the world would be the loss of one's soul. Let him who know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death 
and cover a multitude of sins. James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. Friend, this is the greatest loss because it's your greatest possession. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his own soul? God created you and He created me with His own spirit. God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul, Genesis 2 verse 7. That soul, your most valuable possession, greatest loss would be for you not to take care of that, not to prepare for the other side and to make sure you're right with Almighty God. Along those same lines, the greatest neglect would be a failure to take advantage of the joy of salvation. Listen to it again. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? What if we don't take advantage of it? What a great neglect. Here's God, and He's been working from time, from before time began. He's been planning throughout history. He sent His own Son. He sent the Holy Spirit to give us the Word. He, he, he gave us the Bible so we can know the plan of salvation. It's right here. Let whosoever will come. God wants you to be saved. He wants everybody to be saved. And friend, the absolute greatest neglect would be for you not to take advantage of that salvation. What a horrible, horrible neg neglect that would be. You know, we get worked up, and rightfully so, about certain things that are neglected. People neglect to take care of their family. It gets people pretty angry. People neglect to take care of and feed their children. That's a pretty bad deal. People neglect to pay their bills. That's a pretty big neglect that's going to have a lot of consequences. Greatest neglect, though, is for God to make salvation available. God to want you to be saved, to provide everything so that you could be saved, and you turn your nose up at that. You choose not to do that. You don't take time and opportunity to make sure you're right with God. But then let's close with this one. What's the greatest question in life? The greatest question that's ever been asked you see, the Bible has over 2,000 questions that are found within its pages. One is the greatest question. Acts chapter 16, verse 30, Philippian jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Friend, we ask you that same question today. The greatest question of all questions that have ever been asked, this is the greatest. Have you been saved? What must I do to be saved. You say, saved? What are you talking about saved? Remember, we're talking about saved from a life of sin. All have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. We're talking about being saved from the consequences of sin. The wages of sin is death, spiritual death, Romans 6, 23. We're talking about, when we say saved, we're talking about being saved to live with God in a beautiful place called heaven. No pain, no sorrow, no death, no crying. All the former things of this world that bring us sorrow and heartache won't exist there. Who wouldn't want to go to a place like that? Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Here's the Bible answer. To be saved, the Bible teaches you must hear the Word of God. You've got to listen to what God says in his book, the Bible, about salvation. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, verse 17, and we realize the essentiality of faith. For the Hebrew writer says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. If faith is essential, and friend, whatever way I get faith is also essential, and that comes by hearing the Word of God. And so have you heard what the Bible says you've got to do to be saved? Do you believe? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him, John 14, 6. Would you really believe that He is the Savior of the world, gave His life for you so that you could go to heaven? Based on that commitment, that belief, would you turn from sin and turn to God in repentance? Peter proclaimed in Acts 2, verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, 
for the forgiveness of your sins. Repentance is a turning from sin and a turning to God. You're going to, will, we, will we change our life and turn to God? Would you confess Jesus as the Savior of the world? Paul said, with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And friend, would you do what Jesus said, to have every sin washed away and to get into Christ? The Lord said it this way, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark 16, 16. Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. 1 Peter 3, verse 21. Jesus said, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John 3, verse 5. And Saul of Tarsus was told, who later became the apostle Paul, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts 22, verse 16. And then, after having obeyed the gospel, contacting the blood of Jesus and the watery grave of baptism, Romans 6, verses 1 through 4, we rise up out of that to walk in newness of life. Friend, I'll promise you today, there is no greater life than the Christian life. No greater hope, no greater help, no greater joy, no greater fellowship, no greater salvation. The only salvation that we find in Jesus Christ. And so we ask you today, is that salvation yours? Are you living the good life? by being in Jesus Christ? Do you have the hope and the joy and the, the blessedness of knowing that God is your Father and that all is well with your soul? Friend, if not, we encourage you today to become a Christian. If we can help you, if you need to study more, we'd be happy to talk to you. And our hope and prayer is that each one of us will live in such a way that one day we can hear the Lord say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, Internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 844- Six Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.